Hello everyone and welcome back to our classical dance module. We ended with talking about these figures that you see on your slide. I want to um, get, offer some more information as it relates to Filippo Taglioni. He was the father of Marie. He was the son of two dancers. He was an accomplished musician and dancer, choreographer, excuse me, and dancer. He was actually the original choreographer for La Safide and is given credit for being one of the influencers, the um, originators of the Romantic era. I also want to bring attention, additional attention to August Vernonville as the director of the Danish Ballet and more specifically the Danish Ballet. We began the semester speaking of how dance is a ephemeral um, manifestation, a physical manifestation of a culture. It is their movement language. Their movement language speaks to their society. Now, while in the Romantic era within France, we saw this extreme shift to the way that the woman's body was being focused on. Um, she is this ethereal creature. She's taking um, on these more mysterious roles um, and the gentlemen moved to a position of partnering. This same idea and notion was not seen in Danish society. It was not as extreme. And some scholars say that this is because within Danish society, the, the roles between um, the female and the male are more equal. So with that idea in mind, it, make, it would make sense that the way that the dancers move on stage are equal. They are both doing movements that are equally intricate, equally fast, equally slow because of the way that their society is. We are moving into the era of the Ballet Russe, Russe short for Russia. Another way of saying Russia, the Ballet Russe is the Ballet of Russia. During the era of the Ballet Russe, we see an increased speed and uh, difficulty of movement. So we see this idea of athleticism. And this is also aided by the creation of a new shoe. So as technology advances, so do the things that we do with that technology. With the newer shoe, there's more freedom to move. It allows for different types of moves also. The use of the libretto is also encouraging more collaboration with choreographers and musicians. So we already had the libretto, but we see now that it is a tool to be used. It is a form of technology to be used. It is allowing for more collaboration. We also see the four sections, the adage, the female variation, the male variation, and the grand allegro. In your next tech, you're actually going to watch two videos. One is of the Rite of Spring. And just some contextual knowledge about the Rite of Spring. It premiered in 1913. It was choreographed by Nijinsky and composed by Stravinsky. Stravinsky was a student of Rimsky Korosov, who was the leader of the Mighty Hand. The Mighty Hand were a group of uh, Russian composers that were intentionally taking a shifting focus back to Russian folklore. So the, uh, the ceremonies, the, um, the events that happened, how things were celebrated, how things were done in Russia, and specifically predating um, religious practices that predate Christianity or Christianity coming to Russia. These composers often used folkloric songs and chants within their music to give it that Russian feel. With that in mind, Stravinsky was heavily inspired by his time at his childhood home. His family would visit a home and outside he could hear the villagers dancing and singing. So the orchestration, the, com the composure, that the composition that is used, the orchestral composition that is used in the Rite of Spring is based upon the sounds of the chanting, the singing, the clapping, and, uh, and the instruments that he heard outside of his home. When this 
ballet first premiered, there were uh, talks of how the music was so different and it was ominous and it's because it's based on the folkloric um, composition. It's the composition is based on folkloric experiences. Within the ballet, you'll see village dancers. They are in, two, they are in several different groups and you'll see them take turns um, performing and then moments where they're performing together. I also um, would like to, you to go back to the definition of ballet as it is a story that is brought to life through dance, music, costume, and scenery. I want you to remember that as you watch um, The Rite of Spring. The link to The Rite of Spring can be found in your um, module listed on the resource page. So I want you to go to that page, click on the link, and um, just use this time to take notes. My suggestion would be to write a minimum of five based list to have for your notes. Um, my suggestion would be to watch at least 10 minutes, but I'm going to offer this. The more you watch, the more information you have. So if I were to use a, um, and the more information you have to choose from. So if I were to give us a contemporary um, example, if you were to watch a movie and the movie was 90 minutes long, I assure you that the creators of the movie filmed more than 90 minutes. Out of all of their of what they filmed, they then went through and chose the stronger aspects and put them together to make the movie. I want to offer you that in this space. The more information you have, the more baseless you have, um, the more you'll have to choose from, and then you can choose your strongest ones from your uh, what you have. My suggestion is a minimum of, of five, but that is my suggestion. I highly encourage you to do more. So after you've done, you've watched Rite of Spring, I, we wanna shift into talking about Balanchine because your next piece is going to be a piece choreographed by George Balanchine. George Balanchine was, is, born in Russia. He was an accomplished musician um, and became a choreographer for the New York City Ballet. He had a preference to contemporary music and part of this, it is believed that part of this is because prior to coming west, um, meaning to Western Europe and to the US, he was already, he had already experienced jazz. So if we're looking at a map Europe, I'm sorry, if we're looking at a map, Russia covers part of the continent. It is partly in the continent of Europe and it is partly in the continent of Asia. So it is east of the United States. During George Balanchine's life, he traveled west, so from Eastern uh, Europe and um, in Russia to, to Western Europe, which is where you have France and other countries and then into the US. While his, in his time growing up, he was inspired by artists that made art that was informed by jazz. So he'd already been exposed to jazz prior to coming west <laughs> and prior to coming to the United States. Also to be noted is that Balanchine was a Georgian dancer, not Georgian like uh, the state of Georgia, but Georgia like in Russia which is a folk dance there, vernacular dance, social dance form there, that is a grounded form. So this idea of groundedness is already something that he was um, experienced in prior to coming to the US. I note that because if you think about our characteristics of classical ballet, we there was this idea of pushing away from the ground, uh, but Balanchine's folk dance history is in a grounded dance form. Balanchine is also given credit for modernizing ballet. So we see that the, the dance form is continuing to grow with an emphasis on musicality, athleticism, and the bravoura. So we saw that uh, emphasis on athleticism under the ballet russe, and we see it continuing to grow. He fused ballet's cool aloofness that would be a Europeanist uh, aesthetic with the Africanist aesthetic of cool. This quote is from 
uh, Dr. Brenda Dixon Gottschild. And I want you to rewind back to when we talked about dance at court. We described dance at court within the French court, and we also dis the, discussed it in Ghana. What BDG, what Brenda Dixon Gottschild is relating to is those two spaces. So the way that um, the noble person interacted with, with his or her court in France versus the way that the person interacted and uh, entertained their court in Ghana, right? We're going to use those examples. There was a bit of a aloofness, as Brenda Dixon Gottschild sees it, in relation to, um, let's look at it through the lens of your intention behind your dance. So within French court, it's more like, look at me dance, look at me show um you sit and look at me. You, you, versus uh, within the Ashanti Henny, I am dancing for you because I am a representative of you, rather than uh, the other side that was offered, another side or another view that was offered through the European aesthetic. Neither is good or bad. Neither is better or worse, um, right or wrong. They're just different approaches. But this is what this idea is. What these different approaches and combining these different approaches is what Brenda Dixon Gottschild feels made Balanchine successful. Balanchine modernized ballet with that emphasis on musicality. He drew influences from modern and jazz dance, and the use of Africanist aesthetics. Those things are articulation of the torso, syncopation, a turn in. So this is different than our characteristics of classical ballet because classical ballet, the emphasis is on turnout. Angular arms. So think about reaching your arm out to the side. It's a straight line. It's 180 degrees. If you were to bend any part of your arm your, or your, your hand, your wrist or your elbow, you are then creating angular shapes, right? So this use of angular shapes. Flex wrist and a displaced hip. Also, displaced hip goes against or is a uh, is is not the same as that head, spine, hip alignment identified in the characteristics of classical ballet. I gave you a lot of words, but um, I want you to know that this those words are supported via a video. So when you see this text in canvas under this paragraph one section you'll also see a link to a howcast video where a dancer is showing you what it looks like what what that displaced hip and angular arms and things look like so that you'll understand it better when you watch the video of um rubies which is the second video for your um your tag also another plus that i've added on the tag is a short video of dancers from the ballet um, just talking about why they like the Ruby's choreography, things that they highlight. I'm offering this to give you more information as you go into writing up these this tag. So tag number 12. Tag number 12 is a two-paragraph tag. That means it's formatted as two paragraphs. The first paragraph is a contextual paragraph. You're giving the reader history about ballet, um, noting things like the characteristics, and then you're also telling them about Balanchine's impact, which you have listed because you wrote those in your notes and you just watched those videos, right? In your second paragraph, this paragraph might be a little heavier because it includes five base sentences. Those base sentences are going to describe the movement from the Ruby's choreography, but it also contains some connection sentences, about two sentences. And you're going to be able to connect it because you're going to go back and look at those notes, those base lists that you wrote for Rite of Spring, and you'll be able to say, this is similar to, or this is different from. Rite of Spring and Ruby's, were the musical scores were both composed by Stravinsky. So they're, um, there is some commonality in them. I want you to make sure that you complete the task. 
So the task is a two paragraph response. That means it's formatted as two paragraphs. If you have any questions about this assignment, please email me via the Canvas platform prior to the due date so that I have enough time to respond to you. You have enough time to get my response, apply the information, and send it off before the due date. Have a wonderful day.